Laurel Avis Anderson. And what is your business address? It's been a while. 10921 Wilshire Boulevard, Westwood Medical Plaza, Suite 11101, Los Angeles, 90024. And you're a clinical psychologist, is that correct? Correct. And you practice in Los Angeles? Yes. For how long have you been practicing? Almost 40 years. <clears throat> have you been practicing in uh, Los Angeles for that entire time? Yes. And you provide counseling for couples? Psychotherapy for individuals and couples. And what is psychotherapy? Just a, a brief layman's description. Um, it's an evaluation of an individual or a couple's um, problems. And then it's a conceptualization of what's actually going on and an effort to make intervention that leads to change. Do you recognize what this document is? Yes. So what is it? Uh, this is my ledger for tracking sessions that I use for invoice billing. And did this ledger come out of your files? Yes. And you keep this document in the ordinary course of business? Absolutely. And I just want to, um, and this particular ledger, who is it for? It's, well, despite the names that are camouflaged, um, it's for Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp. At the top, um, wh what are the two names that, that it says there? Ann Henry and Joey Davis. And, and, and Ann Henry is Amber Heard? Yes. And, and Joey Davis is Johnny Depp? Yes. And then it, and then, uh, it says age 29 and 52, is that right? Yes. And 29 was the age of Amber Heard at the time? Yes. And 52 was the age of Johnny Depp? Yes. So, so as I understand it, on October 1st, uh, 2015, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard came in for couples counseling at uh, for three and a half hours? Yeah. Yes. Whether they were in for the full three and a half or not, I don't know. But that was the amount of, that was when this, the session started and they came in when they came in and <laughs> not together. Um, and it took three and a half hours to actually do that first session. Uh, so as I understand it, for that first session, Mr. Depp and Amber Heard did not come in together? I don't believe that they did. The next session with Amber, with Ms. Heard alone for background intake, and that was a two and one third hour session. And, and that session was on October 6, 2015? Yes. And what's the next uh, row? Indicated? The next day. You saw Amber on October 6, 2015 for two and a third hours, correct? Yes. And what is the next uh, row indicating? The next day, October 7th, Mr. Depp for three and a half. Again, it may not have been face to face for the full three and a half, but it was being at the beginning of the session, waiting for him, his coming in with the entourage and our getting to work. And for the, th the three sessions we just discussed, the, the October 1st session, the October 6th session, and the October 7th session, those were all in person with you, correct? So yes, the first three sessions were all in person. And then what does it say under, uh, for the next row, for the 1014 row? Couple, three hours. So on October 14th, 2015, Amber Heard and Mr. Depp saw you for a couple session? Yes. There's a there's a couple session on October 14th for three hours, is that right? 1014, there's a couple session. On 1021, there's a couple session where someone walked out for two hours. On 1024, Ms. Heard was there, did a phone session for one and a half. And and how did and on the 1024 row, next to the two hours, it says W out, correct? It's 1021. In the, in the 1021 row, what does it say in the fourth column? 
walk for me that's walk out and you recall who walked out of that meeting i have tried to and i don't because each threatened and stood up <laughs> and i'm not positive who finally did the walkout and then what does it say what is it indicating on the row for 11 12 2015 couple session showed one and a half hours and then on 12 17 what does that show amber alone showed two and a quarter hours it, based on this ledger you saw amber and mr depp for four couple sessions that's right dr anderson i'm showing you it's been marked as anderson three Three ninety seven, no objection. Is that correct? You have uh, no objections. They didn't list objections in their exhibit list, and then we actually communicated this morning and they said they weren't objecting. All right. Do you know who on the team you you, you talked with? I'm sorry. No, that's a, just who, who, who? I believe it was Jessica Myers. Okay. All right. So no objection. All right. That's okay. 397 in evidence then. A defense 397. Um, and I will let you, which is CC000172, I'll let you take a look at it. So it's a one page email. So let me know when you're finished. Do you recognize this email chain? Yes. Do you know who Christian Carino is? Yes. Again. On the page where it says laurel.anderson28 at gmail.com, that's your email address? Yes. The email of March 28th, 2015, from Mr. Carino, he wrote, uh, Laurel, my closest friend, Amber, on copy wants to come see you alone first and then with her husband, Johnny. We'll leave it to you two to arrange a time. Love you both. You see that email? Did you receive that email from March 18th, 2015? I did. And you responded to Mr. Carino's email, correct? As you can see, yes. Yeah. What was your understanding as to why Amber Heard wanted to meet with you? Mm -hmm. I took it at face value that Ms. Heard wanted to have a consultation. And if this is not infrequent that I might get an email like this. So, and when I hear that someone may then later want to come in with their husband or spouse, yes, I think it has to do with relationship issue. Um, on September 9th, 2015, you received an email from Mr. Carino, is that right? Y yes, apparently. He was trying to set it up. And Mr. Carino was trying to set up a meeting uh, with you and Amber and Mr. Depp, is that right? Yes, that's what I assumed. And, and you responded to Mr. Carino's email, um, correct? I did. And then at the top, you received an email from Amber Heard? Yes. And she wrote, hi, Laurel, thank you so much for responding. I really appreciate it. I have to speak to my husband when he's done working today and make sure he's good with that time. I think it sounds perfect. Thank you so much again. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to meeting you. Did I read that correctly? Yes. And, and you received that email from Amber Heard? I did. Um, on September 27th, 2015, you received an email from Amber Heard, correct? Yes. And Amber wrote, hi, Laurel, Johnny and I are back in town and would love to know if you have any availability to see us this week. Please let me know, thanks. You received that email from Amber Heard? Yes. And you responded that you were available on Thursday at 5.30 p.m., correct? Yes. And, and um, looking at the top of the email where it says Wednesday, September 30th, um, would you agree that the next day is uh, Thursday, October 1st, 2015. Yes. Okay. And we need to, we can go back to your billing ledger, but the first time you saw Amber Heard and Mr. Depp was on October 1st, 2015. Is that right? 
Yes. But did you see Amber Heard on December 17th, 2015? Yes, we we had established that. Yes. Thanks for the seven on screen. Dr. Anderson, I'm showing you it's been marked as Anderson Exhibit 7, which is depth 3202. Uh, take a chance, read it, and let me know when you're finished. Yes. Um, attachment seven is a, at the bottom is a, you see a March 8th, 2016 email from Christian Carino to you, correct? Yes. And Christian Carino was asking if you'd be willing to make a house call to Johnny Depp's apartment downtown. Is that right? I did not know where he lived. Uh, his email says, would you be willing to make a house call to Johnny's apartment downtown, correct? Did it say downtown? Yes, it did. Okay. And then you responded on March 8th, 2016, correct? Yes. And you wrote, hey, Christian, have, of course, avoided this my whole career unless someone was in rehab, would be willing to try it once, and that there's something I'd like Johnny to understand, and I don't think he does. Um, where you wrote, I'd like Johnny to understand um that I'd, where you wrote would it would would be willing to try it once in that there's something i'd like johnny to understand that i don't think he does what did you mean by that i can't say exactly what it was i wanted to in part but i i know that i thought that he was <laughs> um having difficulty in the sessions and I think it was something about the process between the two of them that I was trying to clue him into. What difficulty was Mr. Depp having in the sessions? <clears throat> having a voice. What do you mean by that? Ms. Hurd had a Jack Hammer style of talking. She was very amped up. He had trouble talking at a similar pace their dialogue he was cut off a lot so I, I, I I'm guessing this is what I was I'm not sure what I it is but there was something anyhow this is how he didn't have a voice he couldn't keep up with her rapid fire um, way of conversation and so he was really overwhelmed In, in working with um, Amber and Mr. Depp, did Amber ever report to you any physical violence on behalf of Mr. Depp toward Amber? Yes. What type of physical violence did she report to you? Do you recall seeing photos from Amber Heard? I, I, I have, but I don't remember when I saw them. What do you recall about the photos? Her face was bruised. Do you recall wh where on her face you saw, on Amber's face you saw bruises? I think they were around her eyes, but I couldn't be positive. Did, did you witness abuse by either? I didn't person? witness, I didn't witness. Had you worked with Mr. Depp before working with Amber and Mr. Depp? No. Is it your testimony that while Mr. Depp may have said he wasn't violent with any of his other partners, there was violence between, from Mr. Depp toward Amber, correct? Yes, you're right. <clears throat> he had, he had, had been well controlled, I think for almost, I don't know, 20, 30 years. And uh, both were victims of abuse in their homes, but I thought he had been well controlled for decades. 
And then with Ms. Ms. Hurd, he was triggered and um, they engaged in what I saw as mutual abuse. Sometimes I'm not, I know she led on more than one occasion and started it to keep him with her because abandonment and having him leave was her worst nightmare. And I think he may have initiated it on occasions too on that I'm less sure on. And how did you come to the understanding that on some occasions Ms. Hurd physically abused Mr. Depp? Ms. Hurd reported that. What did Ms. Hurd report to you? That it was a point of pride, two things. It was a point of pride to her if she felt disrespected to initiate a fight and was her father had beaten her. She was not going to. And the second, uh, the second one is what she reported to me, which is if he was going to leave her to deescalate from the fight, she would strike him to keep him there. She would rather be in a fight than have him leave. Did you speak to any other doctors or psychologists that worked with either Amber or Mr. Depp? No. Did you review any uh, medical documents of Mr. Depp or Amber? I reviewed a um, pharmacokinetic um, that that Ms. Hurd showed me, which has to do with um, neurotransmitter function, genetics, and medications. Just to go back, uh, Doctor, what professional degrees do you hold? I have a I have a couple of masters, a PhD, and a, a certified clinical nutrition certification. Would you mind please just um, elaborating on that for the record? Yes, I have a master's from young in my, early in my life uh, in uh, teaching and curriculum. I have a master's in psych. I have a PhD in clinical psychology. I have a CCN, which is a certified clinical nutrition um, uh, certification. And do you recall, doctor, uh, in what year you obtained your PhD? Yes, I got it in 82. And if very briefly, if you could just please in summary fashion, just describe your employment history from 1982 forward after earning your PhD. Um, I collected clinical hours um, in hospitals and in psychiatric medical groups. I was employed to do some nutrition evaluation and intervention as well, but there were MDs behind me. We worked in concert, um, then worked in a hospital with, <laughs> I, think, I think that doctor was, re, uh, was um, workers comp um, and then when I was you know I have it out of order then I was on my own but I was employed by that this is when I was employed by a psychiatric medical group um, to do kind of a combination of psychotherapy and some nutrition and then since then I have been so, a solo practitioner out of network word of mouth only very small footprint <laughs> um, purposely um, all of these years when did you become a solo practitioner? Um, very soon, probably uh, in probably in eighty six. So, is it fair to say that as of two thousand fifteen, you were you were already quite established as a solo practitioner? Yes. Generally speaking, what type of services did you provide your patients in two thousand fifteen? Adults only, individual or couples work, and um, with a limited number of people, there would have been neurotransmitter testing and uh, some attention to lifestyle and how <laughs> uh, nutritional elements affect the brain. And if you would just please describe for us lay people what a clinical psychologist does. Um, 
the first thing is evaluation, intake, gather material. The second thing in the way I work is kind of, uh, during the intake process could be one session, could be four sessions, depends on if it's an individual or a couple. I'm conceptualizing, I'm looking for the process. The content is something I make notes on, I care about, it leads me from session to session, but I'm really looking at process. What's going on between two people or what's actually going on inside of someone. The third step is I'm, I show my hand, I talk about it. I try to get either three people in the room all on the same page with me or one other person, this is what I see. And then the onus is on me to not just be a good friend and hold someone's hand and talk about mom, <laughs> but to actually make change. And so I lay out, here are the things I think we need to work on. Um, and then there are action steps for all of them so that someone has a more directed sense of what they're doing in psychotherapy as opposed to just coming in and talking about how they feel. Is it your practice when you have a session with a couple that you take notes from the session? I absolutely take notes from any session. Do you take, at what time in relation to this session do you take the notes? Um, I'm taking them during the session and they know it. Because so I don't want hours and hours and hours of homework at the end of a clinical day. So the notes are often, uh, you know, a lot of typos, wrong pronouns here and there, but essentially I'm just trying to gather facts as I go. Is it fair to say that you take the notes in a somewhat contemporaneous fashion? <laughs> sure. And do you take those notes in the ordinary course of your practice in your business? Absolutely. Do you maintain or do you keep those notes as part of your uh, treatment and regular course, ordinary course of business? I do. Thank you. And what type of information generally do you keep in your notes other than what you've already testified about? Whatever I want to. A anything that, from, it could be content that I'm tracking, just so I know in the next session what kind of content we were talking about. Um, and it could be processed too. Stand by. Now I'll mark that as uh, plans exhibit number one. Showing exhibit one on the screen. Just to confirm, have you seen this do uh, document before, Dr. Anderson? Yes. And and what is it? It's uh, Christian Carino doing the first contact, and the second one is from Ms. Hurd. Uh, wanting to know how to get in touch with me. But accepting uh, what's been thrust upon us, when was your first uh, couples therapy involving Ms. Hurd? October 1st, 2015. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Where was the session held? In my office. And, and Mr. Depp was also there, correct? Yes. How long was that first session? Uh, Three and a half hours. Was that the first time that you had ever met Ms. Hurd in person? I think so. And was that the first time you had ever met Mr. Depp in person? Yes. Okay, now if, if you could please turn, and this is a multi-page exhibit uh, Mr. Nadelhaft did not show you. Uh, this is going to be plaintiff's exhibit two. Stand by. Can I interrupt a second, Ben? Sure. Um, Adam, can you turn up your microphone? Because everyone's a lot louder than you, and when you object, I struggle to hear you. Can you hear me? Well, <laughs> I know, Michelle I know. is a lot louder than you, so if you talk at the same time, I can't okay. hear you. All right, I'll see what I can. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Thank you. And Dr. Anderson, if you could just take as long as you uh, would like to familiarize yourself with this document, I'll just state for the record, these are documents that you produced uh, that have a Bates designation one through 17. Yes, They're, I'm familiar. Um, what are these? Oh, well, strike that. Have you ever seen plaintiff's exhibit two before? 
Yes. What What is it? It's a redacted copy of my personal notes that I provided to you guys. And are these, um, I think you testified in response to Mr. Nadelhaft's questioning that the names Anne Henry and Joey Davis are pseudonyms? Yes. And uh, would you please just identify for us who Anne Henry is in real life? Anne Henry is Amber Heard. Joey Davis is Johnny Depp. And are these uh, your notes that you took contemporaneously of the four couples th uh, of, strike that, are these your contemporaneous notes that you took of the couples therapy sessions? Yes. Would these notes include any session that you had for Miss Heard that was not part of the couples therapy? No. Did you have any sessions with Mr. Depp individually that weren't part of the couples therapy? No, during this period of time, it's color coded. Black is couples, red is Ms. Heard, and blue is Mr. Depp. Uh, whether I talked to them or saw them individually or as a couple, it was all in service of couples therapy. Understood. And so these notes in plaintiff's exhibit to encompass all of the couples therapies sessions that you had with Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, either when they appeared together or when they appeared separately in the context of your couples therapy. Is that correct? I'm looking at one page. If you're talking about the entire redacted document, yes. And I've asked you the question generally, but I want to ask you in the context of, of these 17 pages, did you prepare these 17 pages of couples therapy notes in the ordinary course of your treatment of Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard? Yes. Did you maintain or keep them in the ordinary course of your practice or business? I did. So my question was, uh, what is the significance of October 1, 2015? Um, I'm going to look at what I'm reading so that this makes sense to you. This can't possibly make sense, but it makes sense to me. Okay. They reported what they said to one another. So the first line is Ms. Heard talking, saying that Mr. Depp says to her, no one likes you, you're getting fame from me, I'm falling out of love with you, you're a whore. She's reporting just in the first session just how bad the relationship is, just how mean they are to one another. Uh, and at that point, I, because I'm typing quickly as they go along, I'm switching into a different voice, more about the process between them, where she has, I believe, interrupted him. He says no more about what she says about him. And it's just that they're fighting and she has a hard time. She, she bites the bait. She can't let him talk is, is my recollection. And from this, th that's kind of what that is. So it gives me a sense of what they're doing at home. They're each reporting. This is what we say to each other. Okay. I appreciate that, Dr. Anderson. I'm just going to try to break it down into to little bits. Um, so October 1, 2015 is the date of the first couple session, correct? Yes. And two and a half means two and a half hours long from start to finish? I am guessing they were in, they were present for two and a half hours, but that I waited whatever the first doc, the ledger says, but I waited an hour for them to show up. And Dr. Anderson, uh, in that first bullet point that we can see, uh, you write, Jay says, no one likes you, getting fame from me, falling out of love with you, whore. Jay is Johnny Depp? Yes, but that was said by Ms. Heard. So is it fair to say that Ms. Heard was saying that Johnny said to her, no one likes you, you're getting fame from me, I'm falling out of love with you, whore. That, that, would, that would have come from Mr. Depp, is that correct? Ms. Heard reported that that's what Mr. Depp said to her at their worst. Yeah. Did Amber, when he, when Mr. Depp told you that Amber had hit him in the jaw 
did Amber respond in any way? Did she deny it? Did she admit it? Uh, I don't think she denied it, but what I believe from my notes was that they galloped, she galloped off in a new direction and they um, continued to talk and there was no more that Johnny Depp was going to say about what he was reporting. It was more that they started into a fight. And I wrote that their process is a back and forth firing at each other. At that point, he had some energy. Um, and they don't communicate. They have terrible skills. At any point during the first session, did Ms. Hurd interrupt Mr. Depp when he was trying to talk? Yes. She talked over him. She had rapid fire talking. Did she interrupt him during your other sessions that are reflected in Plaintiff's Exhibit 2? Yes, and I pointed out the process to her at some point, and she got it, that she that no one could actually have a decent dialogue with her if she was rapid firing and talking over and just barraging. It was a process issue. You write doesn't answer directly when he asks her a question to what were you referring there don't have a clue if i could direct your attention further down the page from plan you see the notation to october 6 2015 yes was that the second couple's session no it's red it's amber alone so is it fair to say that you met alone with with amber for two and a third hours in the context of the couple's therapy is that correct Yes, this was to get her background material. So tell us what you mean uh, in that one section. He hits her, no closed fist. She hits back and now starts it for pride because... Father. Hit her. Would you please tell us um, what you meant by that? This is her reporting to me. Uh, it's the only thing in this... Uh, the clinical session that apparently was about physical abuse or else it would uh, not have been redacted out. Um, it's so when she said in terms of physical abuse that he hits her, a no closed fist means an open hand slap to me. And she says that she hits back and now she starts it and sometimes hits him first because her history is having been violated by her father physically and just out of pride, she uh, if she's a lot of things trigger her uh, and if she's triggered she would hit him first and the he you're referring to is Johnny Depp correct yes when you said that she sometimes hits Johnny first because of pride what did you mean she was sensitive to feeling disrespected um, and a number of other things but and so, and if she felt disrespected, she had come out of her background history um, feeling that her pride needed to be, needed to dominate and she needed to stand up for herself. When Ms. Hurd told you that Johnny Depp hits her or slaps her, Johnny Depp was not present, correct? Correct. Okay. And, and it wasn't plural. It was, she referred to, well, I wrote he hits her. Yes, so maybe it was plural. But he was not present when she made that assertion. He was not. Did Ms. Hurd tell you that she socked Mr. Depp? Yes. <laughs> um, she was describing kind of the progression of the physical violence. Did you have any understanding of what she meant when she admitted that she socks Mr. Depp? Yes, because there were three lines above this that explained the progression a bit. And I've already said what it was. Um, she felt she had to hit him back if he hit her. Um, and so she always did. And. And again, that entry is from a session where Mr. Depp was not physically present, correct? 
That's right. Okay, let's move to the next session, uh, October 7, 2015. And this is a three and a half hour session, is that correct? Yes. Was that an in-person session? Yes. Did both Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd attend? No, this is blue. This is John, Mr. Depp's intake. Under, understood. And let's move now um, to the toward the bottom of the page. And I think I'm finally getting the code right. Um, so the next session occurred on October 14th, 2015. And it was the two of them for three hours. Is that correct? Yes. And that was another in-person session, true? Y yes. Um, and am, am I right to say that every single piece of your notes as to the October 14th, 2015 session has been redacted? Is that true? Yes, but I, to clarify something earlier on the ledger. Yes. I wrote two hours couple then Amber. It means he is the one who walked out of that session. My question was, um, am I correct that all of your notes for the October 14th, 2015 couple session for three hours are completely redacted. Is that true? Yes. So, um, so the next session occurred on October 21, 2015. True. True. And it lasted two hours. It started as a couple, then Mr. Depp left, and then you spoke only with Amber, but in the context of couples therapy, is that right? Yes. Okay, and let's go to the next session on uh, page 10. The next session was on October 24th, 2015. And I can't see from the code, was that a, a, a couples therapy or was it just one or the other of them attending? I don't know. This is a red phone session with Ms. Hurd. Okay, great. Um, and it lasted one and a half hours? Yes. So the next session was after that was on October 29th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. And uh, that just... That, that, that one? No, that one was uh, canceled. Oh, it was canceled. That's why it's so short. Okay. And then the one after that, still on page 10, was on November 12th, 2015. There's a, an appointment on 11-4 that was canceled that I didn't put an entry on. Okay. Well, thank you. No, that's helpful. Uh, what about uh, November 12th? Was yes. that a joint session? Yes, it was. And was that in person? Yes. Okay. And then the next session on page 11 is uh, that even I can understand. Uh, so there was a no show on December 4th, 2015. Is that right? Yes. I, I'd like to clarify the no shows. In the oh, system. please, please do. Um, I think they both told me, but I think Mr. Depp told me at one point, but I already knew because this happens with couples. When a couple is having a lot of trouble in sessions, but they're doing well at home and they're in a little bit of a honeymoon, you know, period, they cancel instead of coming in because they know coming in will get them into conflict. Okay. And, and fair to say that that happened again on December, uh, 10th 2015 i can't tell which sessions they were sick or which which tesh, which sessions they were canceling because of this dynamic but it was admitted and explained to me and i understood it fully okay um and still on page 11 the next session was on december 15th 2015 and it was a telephonic session is that right with Yes, with uh, Ms. Hurd. That was with Ms. Hurd, okay. You write, then last night, Monday, she slapped him as he sat there talking incoherently. Who slapped who? I actually, I actually know what happened. What happened? This was, as I said, Ms. Hurd talking on the phone to me. Mr. Depp's mother was in ICU. He had been doing a lot of, he was fucked up, as she would say, on a lot of drugs. And 
she slapped him because he was being incoherent and talking about another being with another woman did she did she tell you that he had hit her first or was she the one who initiated the slap she initiated that one because i think she felt demeaned and threatened and this is what she reported to you correct yes he was not present he was not on the call when she made these allegations uh was 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 he no and you didn't see any of this did you no and you didn't see her in person no. after okay um then uh there is a uh, notation uh, should she call police question mark where is that that's um right below what we were just talking about there in red it says should she call police what does that refer to so what did you mean um that was her asking me did you respond to her i believe i did then you write doesn't want to divorce wants to want to divorce yes what did you mean by that she loved him um he loved her um she believed that she wasn't stupid she knew that what they were doing wasn't healthy and so she wanted to want to divorce him but she didn't and yet it had escalated to this point so she was trying to figure out what to do and she had an entourage around her telling her what to do who was her entourage uh she had a routine group of friends that stayed with her lived in her home um probably as well as uh paid people that i don't know do you recall the names of any of her entourage one was rocky directing your attention to the last snippet from that session will she have advantage if she leaves him but files with police for abuse first was that a question that she asked you yes this was her talking out loud trying to strategize for herself so i'm playing exhibit 3 on the screen and uh, dr anderson i think this is the same document that mr natal half showed you as anderson exhibit 6 so i'm not going to ask you to identify it again but i do have a couple of um questions about it that Mr. Nadelhoff did not ask. I believe you testified and correct me if I'm wrong that you have never spoken to any of Ms. Hurd's other psychologists or therapists. Is that true? That's true. And putting that aside, uh when she refers to her own therapist in this exhibit 3, do you know the name of that person putting aside whether you had ever spoken to him or her? I do not. Okay. Did Miss Hurd ever explain to you why the nuances and com complexity of her relationship with Mr. Depp would be lost on her own therapist? I believe that she felt known in a more thorough way in terms of her re her behavior inside of the relationship. And let's pick up where we left off on the bottom of page 11 of plaintiff's exhibit 2. Okay. And specifically the entry that begins on January 13, it's at the very bottom of page 11, to literally the last line. Oh, that's it. On this on January 13, 2016, was this a uh joint session with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd or was this just with one of them? It was only Ms. Hurd. And let me go back and see if it it was phone. No, 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 I'm sorry. It was in person. No, it was, was No, 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 never mind. 11316 was Ms. Hurd in person. And do you know how long this in-person session was was Ms. Hurd on January 13, 2016? I think it was probably just 1 hour. Okay. 
You write, didn't fight on island till last day. On island started to get into something. Uh, what did you were what were you referring to there? Well, Christmas had occurred, and the goal was they had a lot of people go into his island, and they were going to be together. And the goal was to try and get through the Christmas holiday without fighting. And so she was reporting on that. Okay. Then she's uh, you write he got aggressive, threatening, didn't touch him, hidden bathroom. What were you referring to there? what she reported to me um which was an improvement that she didn't participate so she is it fair to say that she told you she did not hit him at that time yes that's what i believe my notes say yes then you write she threw can at him since home fighting then she better who is the she who threw a can at him Miss Heard. And the him whom she threw a can at was Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Did you receive that email on or about March 8th in the morning at 6.23 a.m.? Well, apparently because I responded in the morning. Okay. Well, then let's, we'll skip it. We'll go right back to your response. Um, so the response at the top of the page of the second entry, I suppose, did you write that email to Mr. Carino on March 8th, 2016 at 7.27 a.m.? I did. Uh, and fair to say that you weren't enthusiastic about the idea of, of making a house call? I was not. And Mr. Nadel Haft asked you about what it was you wanted Johnny to understand about the process and I, I was wrong because I can see now the date of it looking at it more carefully this is after the relationship has devolved considerably so what I I think was guessing was earlier in the um, relationship I don't know what it was I wanted him to understand let's go back to exhibit two then please and we're not going to repeat we're just picking up where we left off and now we've gotten up to page 13 of the 17 page of your notes so if we can start out oh, exactly um do you see where the notes of your session on june 18th 2016 began yes and was this a solo session couples session between you and Mr. Depp only? This is with Mr. Depp, it's blue, it's just the two of us. Gotcha. And it lasted one and a third hours? Yeah. You write fight on her April 22nd birthday. He late, huge fight. His mother died on the 20th. I think I know what you're referring to, but if you could please describe that for the record. One second. This is when I got the Scaramanga Productions on my phone. So he found me at home, which was new. Um, domestic violence charges had already been made. His mother had just died on the 20th. Well, when he told you that there was a fight on April 22, birth, 22 birthday, was that Ms. Hurd's 30th birthday? I think it was. And is he telling you uh, that he arrived late for the birthday uh, dinner party and there was a huge fight? Yes. Do you know who Tasha Von Rhee is? Yeah, well, I know her name. I know she was someone that Ms. Hurd was in a relationship with. Then you write, was chaotic violence, but gave as good as she got. What does that mean? I believe I'm quoting, I'm, I think I'm quoting what, some of this is just my typing of the words he's using while he's talking. Very, ver he's also very verbal when no one's interrupting him. Um, 
and I think he talked about how chaotic it was, how violent it was, and she gave as good as she got. That's kind of a direct quote. Those are not my, that's not my language. Directing your attention further down the page to the entry for July 13th, 2016, three hours Amber in person. Was that an in-person meeting you had uh, a couples theory, therapy with only Ms. Heard? No, this is not couples therapy. This is Ms. Ms. Heard by herself. I wrote in person. Oh, okay. Um, so just to be clear, what follows in your, these are your notes for your individual treatment of Ms. Heard having nothing to do with couples therapy? Not true. In my mind, uh, the dust had not settled on the couple yet. And this was just kind of aftermath of the, the uh, kind of falling apart of the marriage. But okay. I, I didn't mean to mischaracterize anything. I was just trying to suss out what it was. No, um, this is not individual therapy for her. This is about the marriage. If we could please go to exhibit six, Lucian, which is a new document. When I say new, um, it was produced uh, by Dr. Anderson's office, but new in the sense that Mr. Nadelhoff didn't ask her about it. Uh, Dr. Anderson, have you ever seen this document before? Of course, I created it. <laughs> okay, um, and what is it? It's a treatment summary. When I was first uh, subpoenaed, or my notes were required years ago, my notes are jumbly. They don't say a lot. <laughs> they're they're confusing. They're, you know, as you've seen, or you haven't seen, actually. So um, I did what psychologists do. You take, you go through all of those notes and you, and your brain, because it's not as if you're not left with a very, you know, I hope a very clear sense of what went on. So I took everything I thought and believed conceptually about them. I went through all of my notes and I wrote this treatment summary. And then if you could go up. Paragraph is still there. Yeah, and I wanna ask you about that one paragraph. I think you've described this in the course of your testimony, but I did want to ask you about your sentence. She reported oh, always hitting him back as a point of pride, but admitted that she eventually initiated the hitting herself. Is the she re you're referring to, Ms. Heard? It is. And is the him you're referring to, Johnny Depp? It is. Okay, let's move to the next page, please. And, and I just want to focus on the one a snippet on Bates, page three. You write, she reported trying to initiate a fight with him one night by slapping him when she was offended by what he said. Is the she you're referring to there, Ms. Heard? Yes, it is. And is the he you're referring to Johnny Depp? Yes, it is. Then in the last sentence, it was also at this time that she showed me photos of her injuries. When did Ms. Hurd show you photos of her alleged injuries? Well, to the best of my pulling together the information I wrote down, uh, I'm, I'm saying it was right after that fight. And she, my recollection is she came in, she talked to me by phone and then came in the next day. Um, Or at least I thought I thought that 
somewhere around the time she got the injury. I know she came in in person to show me. Did she show you photos or did she show you? Both. Uh, Both. You said she showed you photos. And so is it your testimony that she showed you photos of her injuries shortly after the alleged event? Somewhere in the period while she still had injuries, she showed me photos, but she also came in and showed me in person. And what did she show you in person? Bruising on her face. Um, other than the bruising on her face, what else, what other injuries did she show you? I don't remember. There may have been more, but I don't remember. And you weren't present during the alleged uh, physical injuries, correct? Correct. So the only basis you had uh, with respect to the cause of the injuries was what Ms. Hurd told you, correct? Yes. And you write, the physical violence that occurred between them appeared to me to be mutual. You never actually witnessed any physical violence by Mr. Depp or by Ms. Hurd, correct? Never. And you said that they were each victims of domestic violence, both in their family. Uh, they were each victims of domestic violence in their families. What did you mean by that? They were each beaten by parents. Um, go back very briefly to exhibit two. Page 11. And um, after the part where this this refers to a session that was just uh, you and Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. And this call, which was just between you and Ms. Ms. Hurd and not Mr. Depp involved, that occurred on or about December 15th, 2015? Yes. And was it just shortly after that call uh, when Ms. Hurd showed you pictures and actually came into your office, is that right? She came in on 12-17, so yes. So, so Ms. Hurd came in on December 17th and you saw bruises on her face, is that correct? I believe that's when. Was that bruising that you observed similar to the bruising that appeared on the photographs that she showed you? Yes. You testified that what you saw in person was similar to what you saw in the photographs Amber gave you, correct? Yes. When she came into your office on December 17th, what did her face look like? What I recall is not purple, green, and blue, but just a darkening, so kind of a dark, a darker gray-blue sort of thing. But I, I I don't have a photo of it. I don't remember that well. Is that, Dr. Anderson, consistent with your understanding that there were no other entries on December 15 uh, or December 17th relating to physical abuse? You know, um, there was nothing about physical abuse, nothing in that next session. It was all about Christmas and, get, and her therapist telling her one thing. Not um, and what was the size of the bruise on her face that you observed on December 17th? Maybe like this, in more than one place, about an inch. You said it was in, so is it fair to say those are small bruises in more than one place? So there was, how many one inch size bruises were on her face that you observed? I'm not a good person to ask this question to. I don't really remember. I wasn't looking to memorize it. I think there's other data that will support this, not from me. A few minutes ago, you briefly spoke about seeing bruises about an, about an inch on, on Amber Heard's face. You recall that testimony? Yes. And 
you were you were making motions with your fingers. But, but I was saying multiple. I'm not saying one. Right. You were seeing multiple multiple bruises on Amber's face. Yes. Correct. When you um, were talking about how the size of it, you your fingers were under your eyes. Did you you remember seeing the bruises under Amber's eyes? That's what I recall. They may have been in other places throughout her body. I don't remember, but I, I do remember her face. We can turn to page 13. Um, in the blue, where it says, was chaotic, violent. Do you know what Mr. Depp was referring to there? I, I, what I said previously, and I'll say it again, um, he's kind of doing a retrospective of trying to understand the relationship um, and is characterizing it as chaotic and violent, but she gave as good as she got, and he, uh, and she, she started it, but, in, you know, he's, he's complaining, but he's also just kind of describing what the relationship was. His um, mother is dead at this point. The relationship is not, <laughs> is not good. It's over pretty much. And he's trying to come to terms with it. And he still loves her <laughs> and is mourning. So he's just, he, he's a very articulate man. And when left alone to speak, he can describe intelligently what's going on. I think I'm kind of, I think while he's talking and I'm not trying to be obtrusive with my taking notes, I'm listening, I'm talking, but I'm also copying down a word here and there. So my belief is that those are his words. And, and Mr. Depp, I think you testified about this, but I just want to make sure it's clear. Mr. Depp told you Amber gave as good as she got, correct? Correct. Did you ask what Mr. Depp meant by gave as good as she got? Um, I was pretty aware of what he meant. I agreed. What did he, what did you understand Mr. Depp to mean? All right, I have. Um, she initiated fights. She started violence. She uh, rose to the challenge if he started first, which I, and so she, in my opinion, that had been established throughout the relationship that she fought as hard as he did. And he tried to de-escalate far more than I think she did. Do you know, did Mr. Depp talk about his fingertip with you before June 18th, 2016? No, because I would have written it when he first mentioned it to me. Did you ever see Mr. Depp with an injury to his finger during any of your sessions with Mr. Depp? Or, or that, counseling during, or, you know, sessions together with Amber Heard? During that session, yes, he showed me. On June 18th, 2016, but before June 18th, 2016, did you ever see an injury to Mr. Depp's finger? No. But in, yes, no, I didn't. When we were uh, going through Amber's, uh, the incidents where Amber described Mr. Depp being violent, Mr. Depp was not present, correct? That's true. All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our lunch for the afternoon now. No outside research, not talk to anybody, and we'll give you till 2.15, okay? So you can be excused with Debbie Lusa now. Thank you. For this afternoon, do you need this TV anymore for this afternoon? Um, for the first witness or the, the, last. the last witness? So we can put it down during lunch. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll be back at 2.15 and thank you. <laughs> 